Welcome and thanks for joining me. Today I'm in the workshop, I'm cleaning my watchmaker's bench, I'm preparing my watch cleaning machine and make sure I have everything in order. So this is my watch cleaning machine. I bought it several years ago on eBay. It came from India. It's pretty much like an Elma ripoff. The brand is called a Pearl Sona, and it's not a high quality machine, but it does the job. I mean, it spins, it heats the chamber for drying the parts. So during the move from my old workshop to this one, um, the timing knob, got broken and lost so i don't know where it is it's a pretty important function of the machine because nothing works until you've got some time on the timer before i can use this machine you know i need to clean all these jars out because it's been sitting there for years i think all the cork around the inside has turned to like a jelly um or it's or it's actually dropped into the jar. So when you're cleaning watch parts, there's like two methods. There's the hand method where you're cleaning each part by hand in one solution, or you can use machines. And there's also different types of machines. There's this one, which is a knockoff manual machine. And then there's like semi-automatic machines. And now there's fully automatic cleaning machines. Actually, when I went to Switzerland, I met with Henrik Coppella, who owns and runs a Swiss watchmaking school in Le Locle. And let me find the quick snippet of when we went into the school's cleaning room. Yeah, it's just like a general uh, cleaning station. Uh, this machine we use mostly in the second year uh, for cleaning disassembled complete movements. And they would just have a basket uh, with all the disassembled part, like I would imagine all watchmakers would have something similar like this. This is fully automatic, but you can have also uh, manual um, uh, versions of it. And the first bath would be the cleaning with ultrasonic, and then the rest would be rinsing, rinsing away the cleaning solution. And then it's a heating at the end, and then the parts come out like brand new or, or perfectly clean. And then, um, yeah, that's for the main watch uh, cleaning or uh, after sales service we use it mainly for. So it's not going to be used until they start the, the second year. And then this may be used, it's just a general uh, ultrasonic tank. And we have cleaning solution. In our case we have RG1, which is just a general uh, watch cleaning solution. You can use it for clock cleaning but uh, you can also use it for cleaning bracelets after polishing bracelets and cases. And then we have uh, tap water for removing uh, the cleaning solution. Mm -hmm. And then to remove the tap water now I have to fill it up, but normally it would be half full with alcohol, isopropanol. Yeah. And then you just use either this hot dryer or just a regular uh, hair dryer. Okay. and just heat it and we just have these plastic tea filters so that parts don't get scratched if you just have to clean one by one part yeah so it's just yeah full movements or yeah single uh, movements or single watch parts so when it comes to watch cleaning obviously there's a whole range of machines and they can get really expensive i think this one was like 500 australian dollars delivered which is like i don't know ten dollars us or like one british pound but just before i was searching on ebay trying to find these machines and it appears that no one's selling them anymore i think you can buy them from alibaba or something but you got to buy a few quantity of them you can't just buy one there's one really good thing about this machine because it is a knockoff so this is like the basket holder um, that goes onto the machine. So these are the cleaning baskets. You put the uh, watch parts in there. So you stack these on. So you put all the watch parts and you stack these on carefully, not like how I'm doing it right now. And then um, you put the, the lid on. And then this goes into the head of the machine that spins. What happened was they sent me these with like some steel baskets that had all rusted. And I took a bit of a risk and I bought one Elmer basket, which is stainless steel and a bit expensive. And it actually fits in this, which is really cool. So when you stack them, they have to reach a certain height because there's springs on the head of the machine, which push the baskets down into the holder. And uh, I'm glad they copied it well enough to get that height so I can use these baskets. But uh, I'm not too sure about the metal that they used. I mean, 
How does that happen in aluminium? May not be the best made machine, but it does the job. So I'm going to continue cleaning the workshop and keep reading up on timing and regulation for my watch.